Articles come out and just lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and dedicate this service unto the Lord. If you can join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God, for gathering us here tonight, Lord God, on this day, Father God, that wasn't promised, Lord God. I lift up every single person that's in here today, right now, God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do, Lord God, what you have done, Lord God, and what you're about to do, Lord God. I pray for transformation. Lord God. I pray, Father God, for revival, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just have your way, Lord God, by the Holy Spirit, Lord God. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Living Word of Austin says, Amen. And amen. Give it up for Jesus one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As we go over our announcements for the month of May. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First ones, uh, your cell phones, if you have a cell phone, just uh, please put them on silent. You don't need to turn them off, amen? Um, other than that, we have another, how many of us are ready for our Living Word Conference, amen? It's right around the corner. Um, the dates are going to be the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th. I believe it's a Sunday, a Monday, and a Tuesday, amen? Get ready to have a, a reunion, amen, with Living Word family. If you can, plan on taking those days off from work for the ones who work, amen. We want to go out, amen. We want to represent uh, Living Word of Upland, amen. Go out there and, and, and just make an impact. It's going to be in the city of Pasadena, I believe. If anything changes, we will keep you informed. We will let you know, amen. Also, we're going to be um, called upon to work, I believe, one day out of the service. We're going to be ready to uh, go out. Um, in, if it's in the children's ministry, hello. If it's in the parking lot, amen. We're there to do the work of the Lord, amen. So let's give it up for our Living Word Conference one more time, amen, in the city of Pasadena. They, uh, the times and, and the, uh, the, the, all the information will be passed out later, amen. So keep an eye out, amen. Also, um, let's keep inviting somebody to our, our Wednesdays, our, our Wednesday night radical nights, amen, our Sunday worship service, amen. We've been having a good turnout, amen, on Sunday uh, morning. That's awesome what God is doing in Living Word, amen. We want to continue to uh, hit the streets, amen. Today we did a little bit of an outreach today after we had to do what we had to do. We passed out some flyers, amen. We're out there making impact, amen. We got to make time for the Lord, amen. amen. It, it, it's, it's, it's awesome when we can go out there and just touch one person, amen. amen. One fire that lands into somebody's hands that is going to come out and, and just uh, just keep it open, amen? amen. If you're out there doing that Walmart, amen? If you're out there driving through Jack in the Box, amen? Give a flyer to somebody. Amen. There's some of the flyers out there, amen? We like to uh, just encourage you, amen? And with, uh, with everything uh, other than that, let's get ready to give back to the Lord, amen? amen. So let's give it up for Brother Anthony, amen? How's everyone doing today, church? Amen. Amen. Exciting day. Amen. Amen. We're so blessed. Amen. Before we start, we'd like to call our ushers. Ushers up. Thank you, Lord. All right. So we have three ways to give today. We have through our Zell app, our Living Word Up and Checks, and we have through our tiny envelopes. And just a show of hands, if anybody needs a tiny envelope. Amen. All right, let's get started. How many, how many of us are feeling it today? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's go yeah. to God. Amen. The Lord bless us with the scripture today, okay? It's off of James 1.17. I'm going to read out the God's word. It says right here, every, every good present and every perfect gift comes from above. From the Father who made the sun, moon, and stars. The Father doesn't change like shifting shadows produced by the sun and the moon. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our God is so good. All the time. He never changes. Amen. We're the one who changes. Right? Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So, we're all children of God in here, right? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. But Jesus says in the book of Matthew that we need to keep that childlike faith. Amen. 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 
Uh, our, our God gives no matter what. If we fall away, if we, if we lean on our own understanding, He still blesses us with another day, another opportunity to, to get it right. Amen. Hallelujah. I know when, my, when Aiden's trying to get a, a bag of Takis, he, he's good as he could be to get that bag of Takis. <laughs> we got to remember, our God is good. Even through our obedience, He pours His blessings out on us. Amen. Amen. Just, just remember, He gave us another day, church. Amen. So let's get to the Lord today. Amen. Amen. So if you could stand, just join me in a prayer on uh, tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, my God, we thank you for another day, my Lord. We thank you for all your many blessings, my God. May us always be grateful for this breath in our lungs, my God. Just another day to wake up to praise you, my God. My Lord, I pray over my brothers and sisters, all the little ones in here, my God. I pray prosperity, my God. I ask that you watch over them, protect them today, my God. Tonight, my God, just watch over them. I pray for a covering over their lives, my God. Anything that's holding them down, my God. Any strongholds, any chains, my God, I ask that you break them right now, my God. My Lord, you're a way maker, so let us remember that, my God. Let us lean on you and all your word, my God. We love you and thank you for what you do, my God. In Jesus' my name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's get up for Jesus tonight. Go ahead and dismiss our ushers tonight. And then we're going to go ahead and dismiss our, our children into the children's class. But how many are blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. How many, how many can say, hey, you know what? I'm blessed. You know what? The Bible says when two or more are gathered, the Lord's in the midst. Amen. Amen. I really believe that God give, has given us another opportunity tonight. Amen. And like Anthony was saying, just to be, you know, being able to be in the presence of the Lord. But right now, we're going to go ahead and take a seat. We also want to welcome all the Facebook viewers and the YouTube viewers tonight. Amen. They, if you're watching today, you know, just get ready. You know, get ready for what God has for you. And also, if we're here tonight, amen, it's just a beautiful presence of the Lord. Amen. amen. But before we get started with tonight's service, I want to again go. How many of us like to grow healthy? Amen. 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 Come on. Yeah. Come on. How many of us like it's like I always say, look at the way I, I look pretty healthy, right? Yeah. But we have to understand that that's not the only place that we really need to grow healthy. Is our we need to learn to grow healthy is in our spiritual walk, amen. Because how many of us know that I mean we can get in the off track very easy, amen. And just look at your neighbor, but don't say nothing and they look like they're off track. Thank God they're here tonight, amen. But still, um, we want to, you know, tell, we're going to have these books, okay? It's uh, $10 a book. Tell your neighbor it costs 10 bucks. 10 bucks. And what it is, is on Wednesday, uh, starting June 1st, we're going to start doing the class. I'm going to do it here. If you're online, if you purchase a book. Now, you don't have to buy a book. You can follow us through the sessions. They are college credited as well. If you want to, you know, go towards college. But it's something that you can always have with you. And not only that, after we finish, it's a six-week course that we're going to do on Wednesday nights. On our service nights, you're going to get a certificate of completion when you're here. And some of you might work on Wednesday nights. It's understandable. But uh, you can look it up online and just keep getting your answer so you can go ahead and fill this up. Amen? Amen. So let's give it up for the Lord. Amen. To grow healthy. Amen. Because yeah. I really believe that we need to grow healthy. Amen. But now, who's ready for the word? Amen. Yeah. Oh, come on. Who's ready for the word? Hallelujah. Good. I only got 30 pages. Amen. <laughs> But, um, you know, we've been talking about it, and I was going to start the new series, but I'm going to wait till Sunday so we can start the new series. But we've been talking about levels of faith, right? right. We talked about from having little faith to having no faith to weak faith. And uh, now we're talking about, I, I actually, I was ministering on Sunday about having great faith. Amen. Amen. So there's different levels of faith, and especially in our walk that we're doing with the Lord, that needs to be developed within our lives. 
Could I get an amen? amen? And as we understand our theme this year is staying the course. And how many of us know that sometimes we like to drift off the course that God has for your life? Amen. Could I get a witness out there? Amen. 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 I believe that many of us drift off for some reason or another. You know, why, you know, issues happen in our life or, you know, a distraction, little distraction will take us off course. Yeah. And, you know, once we start understanding the faith that we need to be developed within our lives, that we should be, you know, praising God. Amen. amen. Because God has a plan. How many believe God has a plan for amen. you tonight? Amen. amen. Well, if you don't believe it tonight, I'm letting you know God has a plan for you. Amen. amen. But that's what it is. You know, we start, you know, getting off course in this new life that God has for you. And, and what it is, is because why? Because sometimes we're not understanding it the way we need to be understanding it. Amen? Amen. So we've been talking about what are things that will take us off course. And one of it is having lack of faith. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, today I'm going to get my faith going. Amen? Today I'm going to get my faith going. You see, Amen. in Hebrews 11.1, 1, and I'm going to just read that first verse, but in Hebrews, you can read that whole chapter 11, and it will tell you about every, there, it has a lot of men and women of God that were in this verse, or this chapter that describes the faith, the great faith that they believe of what God was doing in their lives, amen? Even though they were ordinary people like us, amen? But, you know, there was just things that had to be developed. But in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it talks about, you know, what is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 starts like this. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is the ancients were commanded for. In verse 3, it says, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Father God, for your word, Father God, that you have prepared for us, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you open up our hearts right now. Let us be able to receive, Father God, the word that is being ministered tonight, Lord. Let us just remove, Father God, anything that is going in our minds. Any kinds of doubts or anything, Lord, that is not of you, Lord. But tonight, Lord, let us continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. And Jesus in the church says, amen, amen and amen. amen. Okay, hallelujah. Let's give it up for the Lord tonight. You see, so we talk about the course, right? First of all, we want to understand that there is a course set before our life. Amen. amen. You know, when we accepted Jesus Christ... That's the beginning of our course that's supposed to start. But in this course, there is going to be different levels. There's levels that we got to trust God even more. The beginning level is where we all start is at the beginning of salvation. You know, when we accept Christ Jesus within our hearts, right? Amen. But in Psalms 119, 118, it says you are blessed when you stay the course. And this is on the message Bible kind of breaks it down a little bit for us. But you are blessed when you stay on course. Let me ask you tonight. How many want to be blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Okay. Like I said, if you don't want to be blessed, I'll, I'll accept those blessings as well. Amen? Amen. But you are blessed when you stay the course. Meaning, walk ye steadily on the road revealed by God. You are blessed when you follow directions. How many of us know we don't like to follow directions? Amen. Amen. Series tells you turn left, you want to do it your way. Amen. <laughs> hey, I, I can I, I, I do it once in a while myself. But doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road. He sits for you. God prescribed the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. That means that in our walk that we're going to be with the Lord, we need to put action behind it. Amen. Amen. In other words, we need to have action behind our faith. Paul does say faith, you know, is not, or, or works is not what's going to save you. Of course it's not. But then James says that faith without works is dead. Meaning that our faith now needs to line up with what God has called us to do. Can I get an amen? amen. 
So then it goes on. At that my steps might be steady and firm. You know, keeping to the course you set before me. Meaning that some of us might not be strong in it. That's why we end up falling. Then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. And I learned the pattern of your righteous way. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. Amen. And that's one of the promises that God always gives us. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Regardless of what's going on in our lives. You see, God expects his people, as we understand that we've read in that verse, that it says that we can't please God without faith. So meaning that we need to carry this faith within our lives, right? right. So if we can't please God without faith, that means that we need to start believing that there is a real God, amen? amen. And that is Jesus that died on that cross for us so we be saved and now have life eternally. But this is what it goes on. God expects his people to live by faith. But what does living by faith look like? The examples of faith. That's why we read Hebrews 11. 1. On Sunday, I was ministering about them, all right? There's a teaching, there's time, and there's testimonies. And you can read. I'm going to give you the scriptures right where they're at. So we can continue going with the service. In Hebrews 11.4, it says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God's testifying of his gifts, and by it, he is being dead, yet speaketh. Amen. Meaning that Abel taught us that faith can save our souls. Amen. Because it was a blood, blood sacrifice that he had given the Lord. You guys know the story of Abel and Cain, amen? So what was our sacrifice was Jesus Christ, amen? Understanding that God wanted the blood sacrifice that he given his only begotten son. That for those who believe by faith would understand that we would be saved. Could I get an amen? amen. So Abel taught us that faith can save our souls by what we give God. Okay, now we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. Then we need to learn to give our lives to the Lord. Could I get an amen? amen. But how many of us know that sometimes it's hard? Right? Am I talking to the right church tonight? Amen. amen. I believe that sometimes we struggle. We struggle because sometimes we feel that we got a better way to do things. Amen. Amen. Also, in Hebrews 11, 5, Enoch taught us that faith pleases his God. Amen. You know, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should be not see dead and was not found because God had translated him before, for before his translation, meaning before he left this earth. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen? Amen. And let me go on for tonight. Amen. And then we talked on Sunday too. Noah taught us faith can save our families. What did Noah start doing? He started building the ark. Could I get an amen? amen? You know, he started building the ark. And by Noah, he taught us that by faith will save his family. Just like it will save our families. In, in verse, uh, in, in, and then for the number four, it's taught us that Abraham by faith can guide our steps. Amen. When Abraham was taught, you know, called by God and God was told him, hey, go ahead, leave your family and everybody else. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, let me go here. Hold up. And tonight, we want to continue on this great faith because faithful is one of the three levels of faith in the word that faithful there are two words faith and full amen, amen. faithful means full of faith or great faith amen? amen there's characteristics of the faithful ones amen a person of great faith means faithful and i know sometimes you know that i you know minister the word of god amen and uh, you know we have the men's home and there's just been so much stuff in our lives that we go through and experiences, amen. And believe me, that it takes faith to be able to, 
keep trusting God, amen, where you see things that sometimes you're like, man, how is this going to happen, Lord? Amen. But these are characteristics that we need to develop within our life. You know, at the beginning, like I said, you know, we come in, you know, as baby Christians having little faith. Only trusting God in certain levels of our life. But God says, no, I need to have all of you. Tell your neighbor, he needs to have all of you to be able to do the work that he needs to do the work through you. Could I get an amen? Oh, come on. If we're going to clap for Jesus, let's clap. Amen. But this is what happens. A person with great faith means that they are faithful. Amen. That's why you read Hebrews 11 and 1. That's why they're able to do certain things. But number one knows the way has a firm stand, complete trust and confidence in God is not swayed from the truth. What does Hebrews 11 1 says? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Meaning that you're not going to be able to buy faith at Walmart. Amen. Or maybe CVS. You're not going to be able to buy this faith. You got to understand it. You got to learn it. You got to grow through it, and you got to trust it. Amen. And that's one of the main things that need to be developed within our lives. Because what happens when our faith is not developed that strong? When there's a trial that will hit us, Amen. It's going to knock us out to the left field. Could I get an Amen? amen. Or was I the only one that got knocked out? No, I served God before. I mean, I, me and my wife got saved in, I believe, in uh, 2001. And I thought I was a strong guy, you know, being able to walk with the Lord, amen, and doing everything. Because how many of us know God sometimes gives us seasons that are good? Amen. Amen. Yeah. But when they're bad, believe me, get ready to get tossed here and fro, Amen. But one of the things is, is that I took my eyes off of God, amen, when he started blessing me like, man, I mean, uh, when me and my wife at that time, I think we were 25, we are buying our house and everything, and it just lost it all, amen. But how many of us know that God will give it back to you a hundredfold, amen? Once you come back, he's not going to let you go. You just got to keep learning how to fight, Amen. So, number one, it knows the way, has a firm stand, complete trust and confidence in God. Meaning that the Lord has to be our main confidence in what we're going to have, which is in Him. Could I get an amen? amen? In other words, it's not swayed from the truth. How many of us know that there's an adversary that's always trying to sway us away from the truth? Amen. He's always whispering, amen? That little friend you've got in your head, Amen. But also, another thing is that when the characteristics of the faithful, it has a deep belief in Jesus Christ, who is the way and the truth. Amen. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father only through me, our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning there's no other way. Amen. It's only for what Christ did on that cross. Why we're saved, amen, it's not from what we're doing, amen, or thinking that we're a good person, but it's what Jesus did on that cross, amen? amen. And then the other one is that he has absolute confidence in God and in his word, meaning there's no doubts, amen, because how many of us know that we can start doubting, yeah. or it's just amen. the pastor sometimes, amen? amen. Uh, but not no more, amen, because God will just get me cleared up, amen, and says, get in there and go do what I ask you to do. Okay, Lord, and that's what it is. But there can't be no doubt. There can't be no room for doubt, amen. We have to learn to trust God, and that's one of our main reasons, because why? We cannot see it. But you still trust them. You still keep walking. You still keep moving. Amen. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. amen. He'll take you to that other level. And then what comes after that level. Amen. When you're going through a trial or tribulation. There's a blessing that's waiting for you on the other side. Amen. amen. In Galatians 3.26 says for ye are. Well the faithful are the children of God. Galatians 3.26 says for ye are all the children of God. By faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. In other words, Jesus wants us, the Gentiles, to be of great faith. Amen? Amen? 
faithful from deep down in our hearts to what we say and do. Meaning that we truly believe that God, you know, promised, you know, because we know that the Israelites were God's chosen ones. Amen. But then he let the Gentiles us as meaning being adopted into the sonships of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's seen that faith. And you can read it in Galatians. Amen. But miracles and signs are only to be to the faithful. Miracles and signs come or happen only to the faithful, not according to the faith of the person doing the miracle. You know how many of us need a healing in our life? Yeah. Maybe a healing in our mind. Maybe there's things that are going on. Yeah, we can always pray over the people, but the people that are being prayed for got to believe it themselves that they're going to get healed by the blood of Jesus and understand it. Why? Because the Lord does heal. Can I get an amen? Amen. And that's where we start moving in it. And sometimes that's why I say, you know, our faith needs to develop to get strong, to become of that great faith, to trust. Hey, if you've been prayed and they told you you're going to get healed, you're going to get healed. Amen? Amen. And I'm talking about in our, our minds sometimes, you know, our minds, you know, we're out of, out of tune. You know, things are going on in our lives. But hey, you know what? You trust God. You keep moving. Amen. You put your eyes back on the Lord. Maybe if you did fall to the left or to the right, get up, dust yourself and keep walking forward. Amen. Stop looking at to what happened yesterday. Let that go. Keep moving forward. Amen. You see, when we talk about the healing, many of us on the other side, if we don't believe that we'll be healed. From the miracles and signs, amen. You will not be healed because you don't believe. You know, we have to understand that we have to believe it within that I will be healed. Amen. It can be from your sins or your sins being forgiven. How many of us know that sometimes we do things that we know that, man, we shouldn't have done it. But in other words, God says, don't worry about it, son or my daughter, okay? You're forgiven of it. Just don't do it no more, amen? Don't keep doing it again. Amen. Or sometimes we'll think that we'll be healed from our sins or forgiven because our pastor's faith. Or maybe someone praying, your mother, dad's faith is strong in your life. But that's not the way you're going to get healed. you got to believe it, amen? amen? Tell your neighbor, he's talking to you tonight. He's talking to you tonight. You see, miracles are happening to people. People are being healed. Amen? Not because of their faith, but because of who is praying. This is kind of the way the enemy wants you to think. Amen? Amen. You see, Jesus was healing and doing miracles, forgiving sins, raising the dead. Only to those who had the great faith in him, not just faith. Because what does the Bible says? That even the demons believe. Amen? Amen? That Jesus is the son of God. But who were the ones when Jesus would come across and heal? Were the ones that believed that that was the son of God. Amen. That he was the one that was doing the healing. And it was through him that the power was being moved. Amen. In every individual's life. But it was because of their faith. Not because Jesus of course. That was the word of God. That was the word that everything that was going to come to us. But the other people that were coming to him that he was doing the miracles on was because their faith really believed in God and what he was doing. Amen. Amen. And that's how you get healed. Amen. You see in Matthew 9, 2, it says, and behold, they brought to him a, a, a man sick of, of the palsy. Amen. Lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. You see, levels of great faith mean great faith are, or being faithful has no limit. If your faith is great in your life, amen, towards the Lord, you're not going to have no limit to do what God has called you to do, Amen. I believe tonight he's looking for men and women of God, amen, that are going to take it to the next level in your life. You know, there's so many of our loved ones that are like I always minister that are still lost in that world, in that dark world that we're in. 
You know, you just don't got to look too far, you know, of the things that are happening around the world. But it's taking men and women of God that are going to become faithful to take it to the next level. Amen. That way we can bring our families, our loved ones to expose them to the truth of God. Amen. Because sometimes we just get caught up in our in our own stuff. And we have to understand that we need to learn to engage in the word of God. You know, many of us that I that I share, you know, I always say, you know, how have I been able to keep moving in the things of God? Man, if, if you have my life, you'd probably be crazy by now. Amen. But the only thing that I know that the only way that I can move in this life is staying connected to God. And anything that I have to do, you know, living word, you know, we have the, the, the theme staying the course. I stay the course. I'm not doing my own course, amen, because it's what we do, you know, through our vision of the house to reach, teach, mend, and send. And that's where my heart is, amen. It's to do the will of God. Hallelujah. And that's the faith because why I've seen how faithful he's been in my life. He has not left me without. Amen. But it's the levels of faith that needs to be grown in life. You know, to get to this faith, you know, we talked about it all month. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit, this is what happens. Great faith or being faithful has no limits. We keep growing in great faith from one level to another also. The Holy Spirit keeps imparting on us the faithful. And we were always growing from being fleshly to spiritually. Amen. Amen. How many of us know we like to be brothers and sister carnitas, amen? Jesus. Right? Amen. You guys are looking at me like a carnita burrito right now, amen? Say, man, when is Pastor almost done, amen? God, we have to go give me a burrito after here. Oh, he does look like carnitas right now, amen? But that's what he's trying to teach us to learn to walk in what we do not see. So that means we need to learn to walk in the Spirit of God. Amen. Learn to walk by the Spirit. Amen. You know Amen. when the Spirit tells you, hey, no, 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 para chale tamales. Say, hey, calm down. Slow down. Slow your roll. Amen. You know, you know who, who, who I'm talking about, amen. That's why you're laughing. But that's what it does. It's our helper. You know, that was the promises of God that he told us that in this time, you know, I have to depart from here. So that way you can do greater works Amen. than I'm doing here. If, if we kind of understand that, I was trying to kind of like kind of illustrate it in my own mind. Right. But it's like this. OK. Jesus started his ministry I think he, when he was about 30, they're trying to say around that time. And he started it. He did it for three years. But he said, you will do greater. Meaning that you need to get involved. Amen. Amen. If you have more than three years that are doing things for the Lord, and believe me, that's the things that God is saying. Amen. We have to understand that it has to be done through the spirit of God. Not in our own strength. Because how many of us know we like to do things in our own strength? That leads you to brother and sister carnitas right there. Amen? Amen. In other words, spiritual men do not behave like ordinary men. Oh, look, the men's homes all turning over the other side. Amen? Amen? Spiritual men do not, are not like ordinary men. Amen? Amen. In 1 Corinthians, Paul is writing the church of Corinth. It says like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to verse 3. It says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brothers in softness. Amen. To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy people. Together with all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So in other words, we need to understand that we need to be walking like holy people. Amen? Amen. And not just wearing holy socks tonight. Amen? Amen. But when we understand this, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us according to the faith. But if you are of great faith, you have one of the several gifts of the Holy Spirit where you're going to be able to do things where you're going to be able to impact people's lives 
they come across you. Can I get an amen? amen. In this level, also you have, you know, power to perform some great things, amen, for the Lord Jesus Christ. But remember, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because some of us yeah. might get weird, amen. amen. So look at your neighbor. Oh, I got the power, man. Look, check this out. No, you don't. You just got the power of just being all carnal, amen. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. You know, when you're humble, when you're in your prayer, when you're in your word, amen, then the Spirit of God will start moving because you'll start being able to have good discernment to start making right decisions, amen. And also, it's going to lead you to the people that you need to reach. Could I get an amen? amen. John 14, 12 says, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Amen. Amen. And what did he go on to? To prepare a place for us. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, so now you know that the power is there through the Holy Spirit to heal, but also tells us to the disabled to rise up and walk. You even have the power to raise the dead, to bring the life back, amen, amen. of people they come across. But who had this power of this great faith? I'm glad you all asked, amen. amen. This is the level of faith that Paul carried. Peter, John, and other disciples, amen. But it was a time where they were walking with the Lord, amen. Being there by them sides, amen. But when Jesus even said, men of little faith, when Peter was walking on water, amen. You remember when he started sinking, when he took his eyes off Jesus? And he said, men of little faith. But how many of us would have known, where would your faith been? Would you have been with the disciples in the boat? Or you would have been the one having the courage, let me get out the boat, Jesus in. Think about it. I'll probably say, I'm not going to do it. Go ahead, you do it, amen. <laughs> Go ahead, Peter. You know, so where is your little faith at? You know, but no, Peter had the courage to get out the boat, amen. That's what God's saying tonight. Get out of your boat, amen. Get out of your boat. In Acts chapter 9, verse 40, 41 says, But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, uh, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive. Amen. You see, this power and gifts are only found in the top of the most levels of the great faith that were walking in God. Amen. The faithful, those with great faith are always ready to lose their lives for the gospel. If you hear the disciples, they did not all die a good, pleasant life. Amen. I believe it was only one. The rest of them had to go through it because of what? Of the truth of God that they believed all the way to death on the cross. Amen. And some even thought that they were unworthy. That's why some of the disciples, they were upside down when they were nailed to that cross. But this is what happens with people of great faith, the faithful. Number one, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven and be crowned the crown of life as it is written. Revelations 2.10 says, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Meaning, in other words, to save your life, you're going to lose your life. But to, not, to deny your life for my sake is when you will find it. Amen? Amen. How many want to in, inherit the kingdom of God? How many want to really save? Uh, come on. It, 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 really, how many want to inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus. Amen? Well, that's the promises that he gives us. Amen? That we need to be faithful. It says that, that the great faith, okay, will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And be crowned the crown of life as it is written. Amen. Amen. In other words, be faithful unto death and we will give you, he, I will give you the crown of life. Yes. Revelations 2.10, read it. Also, number two, and we're almost going to end, so I want to just kind of throw out these points. Number two, 
receive the promises and blessings. Galatians 3.14 says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know, that means that Jesus said, okay, when I depart, is to give you the promise, to give you the helper, amen, that you need. And also when you accept Christ Jesus in our hearts, meaning that that's where Jesus now lies within our lives, amen. So it's to receive the promise, amen. amen. And number three, God's eyes are always with them, or with us. And Psalms 101, 6 says, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Amen? Amen. So I don't know about you, but one of the things, like I said, you know, I know that God will be there with us, you know. Amen. I believe all of us that are in here tonight, we might have had some things that we know in our mind that there is a God. And I'm going to tell you like this, he's still there, amen? amen? It's just for us to start rising up so that we, God can begin to do what he needs to do with our lives, amen? amen? Before it gets too late, number four, whatever they do, they will, they, they, whatever they do, the, they, whatever they will, it is done. Sorry about that. Matthew 15, 15, 28 said, Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even though Will and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew 9, 29 says, according to your faith, be unto you. Amen. Amen. And number five, will always be with the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Revelation 17, 14 says, They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and that they are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Do not be confused in the last line highlighted. There is that part where it says that we are chosen and the faithful. And we can all stand tonight. Amen. Meaning, the chosen were the Israelites, while the faithful are the Gentiles. Salvation is by grace through faith. While to the children of Israel, they will all be saved, those that are chosen. In other words, us, God has given us the opportunity to accept them into our hearts and in this course that we're in tonight that we've been in we need to start keeping and, and, and walking in it regardless of what's going on to the left to the right we need to keep putting our hope and trust in God and not looking to the left or to the right because there's an adversary there's a true enemy that's trying to take you out. You know, the Bible tells us that we were in a life of destruction before until we found Jesus. And that's the way. Jesus is trying to keep you in his way and in that path. But the only way that we can be in that path is we have to trust him, even in our situation. I don't know if anybody's going through something tonight. Or maybe it's it's a good, you know, it's going good for you. Somewhat. But still, regardless if it's a good season or a season that you're in, it's not just to give up and throw in that towel. It's a time to start getting strong right now. As the times we're in, times that we need to really open up our eyes. I was sharing with one of the men earlier. The, the times we're living in, you know, yeah, here in America or in the United States, we have it free for us that we can do this. But I believe that many of us get stagnated in our walk. And when it's stagnated, it's just sitting. 
God wants to do things in your life so you can start bringing people to him, amen? You're not bringing people to you. You're not bringing people to me. We're bringing people to the Lord, amen? amen. Jesus Christ. You like I said, you know what? It doesn't take a pastor to bring someone to the Lord. He can do it through you. It's just you got to be, hallelujah. We're going to clap for Jesus, amen? Clap for Jesus. But that's what he wants to do. And not only that, it's your testimony that he's given you to give other people hope. You know, that's where God begins because why now change is being transformed in your life that people are gonna start seeing the evidence that is real, amen? But tonight, we're gonna go ahead and just close it up there. And uh, if we can all bow our heads and I always say the prayer, the sinner's prayer, amen? If you saved or not, the Bible says that we should repent and ask God for forgiveness. Regardless of what we're doing, amen? Because the Bible also describes us that there's nothing righteous about us. We always fall short of the glory. But it shouldn't be happening, you know, the same thing. We need to stop. But at the same time, God says he'll forgive you. But get your heart right. But tonight, if you can just repeat this prayer, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight, I accept you, I accept you into, my heart, into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and I believe that you arose on the third day and I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father Lord tonight forgive me of all my sins and I'll forgive those who trespass against me and from this day forward Lord fill me up with your spirit and guide my path in Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Let's give it to the Lord tonight. If you said that prayer and you believe it with all your heart, that's all God says, amen. That's your true salvation. That's your true.